If you've recently upgraded some incandescent bulbs for an LED bulb and experienced a hyper flash, that is where the bulb blinks really, really fast, this video is for you. I'm gonna show you how to fix that with a resistor. I'm gonna show you what a resistor is, what it does, how to test the wiring to connect the resistor to get rid of that hyper flash and have it blink normally. So let's show you guys how to install a resistor. This is my truck and this is my tail light. I'm gonna pull it out. And then on the back side, I'm just gonna unplug everything so it's really simple to show you guys. Now I already have some aftermarket LED bulbs we're gonna to get to in a second. So what are we doing here? This is your original bulb, something that looks like this. This is probably something that you just upgraded. Now, what is it? It has got argon gases and some tungsten in the middle. It's a wire wound filament. That wire wound filament lights up, but it provides a resistance. Now your computer on your vehicle can read the resistance and then it'll tell if it's burnt out or not. Now, if you're replacing it with an LED bulb, it's gonna provide a lot less resistance. That's because you don't need that much power to power up an LED bulb. Even if you get it off of eBay or Amazon, they're probably gonna hyper flash because they do not directly mimic the resistance provided from your incandescent bulb. In order to replicate the resistance, we need to add a resistor. So, let's show you what that is. It looks something like this. This is a Morimoto 7.5 ohm resistor. Now, it's got two wires coming off of it. One of them is going to be connected to your turn signal wire. It's going to receive power every time it blinks. And the other wire here is going to get connected to the ground wire. Now, how do you test those? You can do a couple different things. You can use a voltmeter or you can use a test light. Let's show you how to do it. So let's make our way to our connector where the original turn signal bulb was on. What I'm going to do is actually pull back some of this sheathing so we can test the wiring to find out which one is parking brake. Now your colors might be different and the colors don't really matter. What you need to do is pay attention to the process. So one would be for your parking lights. The other one's gonna be your turn signal and then another one's gonna be the ground. So what I'm gonna do is strip back the wiring with the wire stripper like this one. I'm not gonna cut the wire, that's the last thing you want. Just pull back the wiring a little bit to expose some of the metal. You can pick something up like this. This is a really good wire stripper just from any local hardware store. With your wire stripped back, grab a voltmeter. This is what my voltmeter looks like, yours might look different. What we're recording is DC current. So have your friend hit the brakes and then grab your voltmeter. Now usually your ground is black, so I'm gonna try to put the black to the black wire, one of them here, and then the red tip to the other wire. Now it should hold 12 volts solid. Now like I said, my brake light and turn signal are the same, so I'm gonna hit the turn signal and then I'm gonna show you what the voltmeter can do. So I'm gonna put the black lead to the black wire here that we strip back, touching the wire. And then I'm gonna put the red here and you should see a change. If you see it getting power and then losing power, getting power, losing power, that is your turn signal. So that is what you need your resistor to connect to. You need your one end of the resistor to connect to that wire that is flashing and the other one to connect to your ground wire. A lot of the voltmeters out there do get overloaded when you do that, and that's why I would rather choose a test light. Let me show you that really quick. You can pick these up for really cheap at AutoZone or anything like that, even from Amazon. Now, it looks like something like this, and it'll light up when it gets power. So let's go try this out. I'm gonna put this end on a ground. So find a non-painted screw that's connected to the body or something. I'm gonna put it right on the side here. This should work properly. So now I'm gonna take this in, I'm gonna connect it to that power wire, the one that we found that was flashing with the voltmeter. Let's do it again here. Now, if this one was not lighting up, maybe you weren't on the correct ground wire. Just test around once you see it lighting up. Remember, we're gonna be connecting to the turn signal wire that's on, off, on, off, and then the ground wire. So let's get our resistor. Now, some of the resistors you get like this will have connections like this which will be T-taps. And it's so much easier to connect T-taps, especially if they're waterproof T-taps, to your factory wiring. Now, a lot of you, if you're living in Minnesota, do not want that. You would rather have something that is soldered. So you can do that as well. As long as one end goes to the on-off, on-off turn signal wire and the other one goes to your ground wire, you're in good hands. For this video, I'm gonna use the T-taps because Morimoto includes them and I think they do a really good job. I've never seen one fail. So I'm gonna grab this end and we're gonna put it over here push the wiring through. I'm gonna close it down and use a pliers to squeeze this down tight over the wiring. 
that'll give you a good connection and you can just connect one end of the resistor to this. Now it doesn't matter which end of the resistor goes to your ground and which one goes to your turn signal wire. So that's really easy to get it right. Let's go and plug this one in really quick. And there you go. Now you gotta do the same thing on this wire here. And I'm gonna plug in the resistor. Your resistor's connected, but they do get very hot. That's why you'll see in a lot of the resistor kits, it comes with screws or some self-tapping screws. And that's because they want you to mount it on the body back here somewhere. So do it to your own discretion. Take one of those screws. You only need one. They come with two generally per resistor. You only need one. Put one screw right here into the body of the bed. Just make sure it doesn't come out of here. Now, if you're doing this in your front turn signals, just find a spot that is not plastic. So let's see if this works with the Armor Series bulbs. As you can see, it is not hyper flashing. It is just blinking normally like you wanted when you purchased your new LED bulbs. Now, what if I unplug one of the resistor leads? It's going to hyper flash. When you hit the brakes, as you can see, this Armor Series bulb is super bright. The Carbide 2 from GTR lighting is even brighter yet. This bulb right here is a red bulb because in this case, it is passing through a red lens. So when you're buying an LED bulb to upgrade your original incandescent bulbs, whatever the lens is, is generally the color you should go with. I know a lot of you in the comments are gonna say, but I want a white bulb because the white bulb produces more lumens or it's brighter. That's just simply not the case. A white bulb cannot pass through a red lens as well as a red bulb can pass through a red lens. You also have to keep in mind of your bulb type. If you're taking out a 7443 bulb, you need an LED bulb that is a replacement 7443, otherwise it's just not going to fit. So keep that in mind. If you have issues trying to find what bulb you have, you can go to headlightrevolution.com and type in your year, make and model. You'll see everything there. Now, this bulb right here was the bulb that I had in my truck in the first place. The reason being is because the carbide two bulbs actually have a resistor built in. So I really like this bulb, the GTR Carbide 2 bulb does have that resistor built in and you don't have to worry about it hyper flashing in most cases. Now, if your vehicle has a brake and a turn signal in the same bulb, like say a dual filament bulb, you might have a chance of it still hyper flashing after 45 seconds or a minute or whatnot. The reason being is that some of these LED bulbs are so bright, they push them so hard that they ramp down their power levels after a certain amount of time. So if you're holding your brakes and you have your blinker on at a stoplight and it's taking forever, they might ramp down. That will not provide enough resistance to the vehicle. And so the vehicle will think that the bulb is burnt out. So then it'll start to hyper flash again. An easy fix is just turn off your turn signal, turn it back on and it's good to go. Another bulb that I could recommend to you guys would be this one right here. This is the iLED bulb from GTR Lighting. So this one right here is a little bit more unique. It's really customizable and it's extremely bright, kind of as bright as the Carbide 2, which is my favorite bulb when it comes to the turn and brake bulbs. This looks amazing. So if you've got less fluting on say your headlight or your taillight and you want something that looks cool, this is a good option. And the reason that I'm telling you guys about that is because if you need resistors, this one has this right here. This is a hyper flash adapter built in. So you've got a waterproof connection on this side and then you've got a waterproof connection on the connector itself. If you put this in line, you don't have to install the resistor at all. You don't have to worry about soldering or T-tapping into your factory wiring. This should work plug and play. So let's say you just mounted your resistors but your bulb is still hyper flashing or you're still getting error codes on your dash. Well, if you have a Ford, you might have to cycle the ignition off, plug the bulb back in and then ignition on. That should fix it. Otherwise, depending on where you get your bulb or what kind of bulb it is, it could be polarity specific. That means if you put it in and it doesn't work, all you gotta do is take it out, flip it 180 degrees and push it back in. That should now allow the bulb to work. If it's not lighting up at all, that's probably your issue. Now, what if you've done all of this? You've mounted your resistor properly, you put it back in and you're still getting error codes and it's still hyper flashing occasionally you guys will have a different ohm resistor that you're gonna need. This one right here is a 7.5 ohm resistor from Morimoto, but there is also a six ohm resistor. I would suggest going down if that was the case. If for some reason your resistance is not good, if you have issues trying to find what bulb you have, you can go to headlightrevolution.com and type in your year, make and model. You'll see everything there.